Hey everyone, how's it going? Hope you're having a good day where you are. I'm uncertain right now. Uncertain as to what to put on the channel, what games are going to do well, what games aren't going to do well. And at this point in time, I would rather focus on games which would perform well in the sections of gaming in which I cover over games in the same sections that I cover that aren't performing well. But how do I know that until I upload the game and then looking at the number of views and comments, most videos are non-existent of comments. So that is one thing I can't really put any kind of success upon. So the views and likes are more or less where they are, unfortunately, rather than any kind of actual feedback like do you like the video or what do you think could be improved upon my videos something like that I started uploading Clanad which is a visual novel that is coming up to I'm not sure how old it is definitely over 10 years old but it's a visual novel I started uploading and any part one of a Let's Play series does well because it's the start of a game. But then as it goes out, it just diminishes in interest. And that to me is just an indicator that people just aren't interested in it. Or people have already watched the game, so therefore there's no need to watch it if A, they've already played the game themselves. B, they've watched somebody else play it. Or C, an amalgamation of both. And the majority of the time when it comes to watching somebody else play a game, it's always going to be the larger content creator. For me, I see that if somebody else like Manny Badass Heroes played a game, then why bother watching the same game on another channel? Obviously, the person with, norm, sort of with more numbers is viewed to be more successful, more trustworthy, more knowledgeable within their area because not only are their content of a high quality but also as well the progression that they make is always consistent or going far and above beyond on which their channel has been before. Like I think about Two years ago, Manny's channel was only a quarter of the size of what it is today, which is astronomical, but also at the same time it, prevent, it, sorry, it presents a problem to smaller creators like myself. Like, I'm not going to mention any other content creators that are around my size or less or more, but it presents a problem to us where we have no potential of growth because that growth has always been absorbed into either a channel like Manny Badass Heroes or it's a kind of channel which I've mentioned a few times throughout my streams but haven't really discussed about in great detail before today and that are VTubers. So just to provide a very very basic summary of what they are, they are virtual YouTubers, virtual streamers, that presents themselves as a anime character. And this to me, and the, the huge amount of success that comes about from being a VTuber just presents to me a problem which foresees, so not foresees, but presents itself throughout the internet. It's a kind of fake persona, fake loyalty, fake identity sort of thing. Like, if I can't look at a content creator and have any kind of reflection out of that character, then what is the point in supporting them? Like, okay, their channel could be very popular, but it could be popular for the wrong reasons. I don't see why I should support a content creator that only has a cute visual and makes inhuman squeaky noises to appeal to their not as intelligent audience. And it takes a certain amount of intelligence to realize that if you make certain kind of cliche trope noises 
to appeal to your audience, then it doesn't matter upon what the person is like as a person. It doesn't matter about their personality. As long as their external factors are always shown, then it doesn't matter. As long as it doesn't create a scenario where the anime character is broken and therefore the real person is behind it. Because I think there was one instant where that happened, where the um, the rigging program, rigging software, however you want to call it, um, malfunction and then the real person was exposed and then from their views just suddenly I think the statistics just dipped down for a particular kind of person but it doesn't stop the cheapers from doing what they do it would be I wouldn't say it would be good but it would be fascinating to see like for just 10 seconds of a random stream or anything like that where a rigging program malfunctions and we see the kind of person that they are beyond their anime persona like what are they wearing what do they have in their background that could be potentially racist and stuff like that and that's the thing right vtubers i'm not saying raw numbers but in their um population percentage you see other people make videos on VTubers and point out the fact that they are racist. They surprisingly get away with the amount of racist stuff that they put online because of their visual identity, of their visual, um, their visual persona. Like, you're a person at the end of the day if you're a VTuber, and it doesn't matter what you are on the outside. What's on, what's so important is on the inside, and some of them are about as toxic as some bullies on the internet. Some of them are so toxic that people are just so blinded and stupid about the fact that there are content creators out there that would identify themselves as an anime character, and people are like, oh, they're so cute, oh, woo. Oh my gosh, senpai! And stuff like that. Who talks like that in real life? Who makes these squeaky noises outside of anime? Who makes these squeaky noises outside of content creating in which you are an anime character? Like, that makes zero sense. And that's why I personally despise VTubers. Because not only are they not realistic, but also, they have stolen potential growth for channels like myself. And I hate that. I also hate the fact that one day, there's going to be a lack of visual representation diversity. Do I want to be a human being, or do I want to be an anime character? Because nowadays, to succeed, you have to be a fake version of yourself. You have to be somebody that isn't you. And that is just a ghastly, disgusting way of looking at life. Thinking that you can just hide yourself away. Then just fake yourself as a overly cutesy, overly squeaky anime character. And it's not just the VTubers themselves are toxic. It's also their fans that are toxic. People who are pour their life savings to their respective VTubers just so that they can get the next microphone, which is even better than the current one that they've got. Or if they've already got the top of a range microphone, they can just spend it on something else. Like, I don't know, putting a fake background behind them. Or putting even more fake features on their fake persona. I realise that the opinions I put are very subjective, but I can't see myself supporting something, not someone, but something that is fake in a way. And I realise that there is a real person behind the anime character, but faking yourself to gain growth is so, so, what's the right word for it? What's the right phrase for it? It feels like you are detaching yourself from reality to such an extent where your own identity becomes illusioned. It does, it's not there anymore. And we all have the same beginnings. And you could also say that gaming, resorts to gaming, is a way of hiding away from reality. 
but we all have our own personal problems to deal with. We're all thinking about what's ahead in front of us. And it feels like being a VTuber, you detach yourself from reality too far. And you look to the extent of... Of captivating those who also want to idolize themselves as some kind of anime character, supporter, slash simp, slash toxic fan, slash whatever they want to be. Like, the proportion of fans in VTubing are far greater than a non-VTuber content creator. But the thing is, in many years to come, VTubers will monopolize the gaming sec sector, sorry. Unless you're already an established channel where you have hundreds of thousands of subscribers, hundreds of thousands of supporters, then smaller content creators like myself will either have to become a VTuber in order to stay relevant, or we pursue something else entirely. And do you know what the most ghastly thing about VTubers are? Yes, they're only within like gaming so far, and probably here and there in a few other sectors. But think about if, let's say, it will come to a point where anime characters will be presenting how to do gardening, or how to do bakery, or any kind of everyday activity. What if we decide to hide our real selves and just be an anime character doing everyday stuff? Anime characters doing dusting. Anime characters watching TV. Because we've come so far in technology where that kind of thing would be possible. Like, throughout the past year or two years, my channel has hardly seen any kind of growth. It feels like I'm running on the, tr the same treadmill at the same speed, but my legs are unable to do anything. Because, for some odd reason, my legs decide that that is the absolute limit in which it can go. And I dislike the fact that I'm feeling more demotivated nowadays to make videos than I did when it when it was just a passion based thing. It feels like nowadays I need to do more than having it at a passion based thing and see it as something which I could possibly thrive from. And the stupid thing about the internet is is well mainly YouTube is that nowadays we have to provide tax forms in order to have monetization. Well what if said content creator never entered a job even once. How do we even put tax forms in? Because I believe those come from having a job. So yeah. There's just too much going about. There's too much here that is really constricting and very, very demoralizing when it comes to putting something out there and knowing that it will barely make a difference. It will probably have like plus one subscriber and that's all. Probably somebody that only looks to see that game and then once that game's finished, they then dip out of your subscription feed because they're not interested in that kind of game, but that particular game. Another thing as well that I just thought of is the potential deadline of my channel's last video will be sooner than I put on my community page. I put a lot of extensive posts on my community page just expressing my different themes and thought processes when I um well, when it was about in late June, early July. And also stated about a particular game that I want to play last on the channel before retiring. Unfortunately, that game's release date has now been extended. And I'm both happy for the development team because it allows more time for them to be able to fully flesh out their game. And it was announced at such a point where you wouldn't feel disappointed about the game's release. It's not like it was, let's say, a week's time before it was released, and then the developers were like, we can't deliver this product in April 2022. Let's release it in June 2023, which is the new earliest release date of the game. Which presents to me a very unique problem, 
The problem being that I wanted that game to be the last game which I wanted to play on the channel before retiring. I wanted it to be a game which is something which I've been thoroughly looking forward to, but now its schedule date is released at least a year more than it was going to be, which presents a problem to me where I don't know if I can continue doing this kind of theme for that long. I don't know if I could be able to keep this up until 2022. I feel like as time goes by, it's more likely that 2021 is going to be my last year of content creating. And a lot of people were really upset about that when I put that post out. And I'm heartful that people put their opinions in a way that um, shows me that you will indeed miss the stuff that I put out. And I'm both heartbroken by that, but also thankful because it shows that people will miss me. But it feels like I'm running on the same treadmill for so long now that... I need to find a new treadmill in life and try and go about it in a way in which I am able to progress. I mentioned a few times about wanting to become a voice actor, but I have have not found the motivation to start researching into voice acting and what kind of stuff I need to do or what websites would be the best places in order to go to for voice acting and stuff like that. Or... Um, just putting some samples on a SoundCloud account where it would show these pieces of um, different uh, impressions of different characters and stuff like that. Well, not different characters, but just different like emotions and things that you would do on a day-to-day -day basis. None of that VTubing crap, which involves really random squeaky voices and stuff like that. They're not all squeaky voices or... Um, fake but there are a huge majority of youtubers that do follow along that fake persona fake voicing fake kind of thing because the stuff that's said in some youtuber live streams you never see that in a day-to-day -day conversation with the possible exception of anime conventions i felt for a long time that the potential growth of the channel has just diminished and it's mainly down to larger content creators, but also VTubers as well coming into work and potentially draining all kind of progression that I would have otherwise. Because before VTubers, my channel was growing quite consistently. But nowadays, I'm lucky if I get one subscriber, not like 1,000 or anything like that. No, just one subscriber. And that's out of people joining and people leaving the channel. So I'm in a very, very tough, vicious spot. Probably not even vicious, but there's another word for it that begins with V, visceral. And I can just see the internet one day being filled with fake personas. And it feels like at the moment that's what it is. Just a space filled with fake personas being VTubers on YouTube, on Twitch. It feels like that the work has already been put into the video and people just see the VTubers for the external factors over any kind of evaluation of a kind of person in which they are on the inside. And that in a way just presents a unique problem for the human race itself. Like in 2030, YouTube, Twitch, unless you're a VTuber, you won't have any kind of room to grow. You have any kind of success at all. And I understand that there's going to be people out there that hate VTubers. And I think there's already videos on the internet about people's sharing of a history of VTubers. And then they present towards a point in which we go on about their opinions of VTubers and they say that they don't like them. But there's a lack of realism in which VTubers present themselves as. Both the external 
factors and the kind of content that they share because who the hell talks like a squeaky toy in real life like that those kind of skills goes towards a very low IQ individual and I'm not saying that everyone that supports VTubers are low IQ or every VTuber has a low IQ I I guarantee that there are VTubers out there that work just as hard as non VTuber content creators that just want that just wants to be themselves. And that's the kind of VTuber that I'd say, yes, you can stay on the internet. But those like I don't know, Gua or Iron Mouse or any huge VTuber that present themselves as some kind of squeaky toy whilst their external factors are just just cute then I don't know where the internet is going but I hope at some point the hashtag VTuber uprising just stops just goes away it went from I see the reason why people love VTubers for the right reasons to now I can't see any reason to support this category of visual representation identity anymore. And I feel like VTubers are the main catalyst towards my channel growth's decline, along with so many other content creators that just wants to put themselves out there as a person, not an anime character. I really don't know. And also, just one other thing I thought of is it's so hard to find a game nowadays on Etio, on Steam or anything like that that looks good that looks like somebody put their heart and their soul into it and it isn't a game that is a meme game or a game that is a university assignment sort of thing where you have to submit a game to Etio or any other kind of site and then screenshot the fact that you uploaded this game and then you can complete your um, thesis or your assignment stuff like that I feel like some games are based on that kind of factor because of the lack of work put to it or the lack of updates or the lack of any kind of pull into the game itself if there's no pulling power then why should I enter the door through to that game? When I see other channels grow and thrive, I'm, I'm happy for them, but at the same time, how come I can't get the same kind of luck? How come I can't get the same kind of satisfaction out of content creating? And I feel like I'm a person that is too old for this kind of time. I thought I should have done this sort of stuff years ago, when these sort of games were just emerging, when The Witch's House, Eve, Omaniki, Corpse Party, when they were all initially released. Although I think about it now, I realise I'll be a very, a very young person if I try to cover Corpse Party when it initially released. Hmm. I don't think I'd even have a microphone or even a source of income at that point in time. But I'd feel like if I covered these sort of games very, very early on, then I could have been in a position where I would be similar to Manly Badass Hero or something like that. A person that keeps on thriving and increasing heavily in the number of subscribers that one has. And it is unhealthy to look at it from a numbers angle. But I feel like if I don't make any progression with my videos after the video is made, then what's the point of putting effort into the video when you know it's just going to fail? It's like, for my English exam when I took at school, I took the same exam four times and still got the same result. No matter how much I revised, no matter how much I struggled, I got the same result every time. And I hate it when job applications come up and like, you have to get a C in English. Well, it's too bad, I got a D in it, and I took the same exam four times. I'm not sure when it's going to be when it will be the last video but it's definitely going to be sooner than April 2022 and I don't think it will be even be October 2021 
Like, I'm really feeling fed up of no success within my videos. Like, Mr. Rator has done pretty well, but I feel like that's just down to the game rather than the actual content creator. There have been certain games throughout my YouTube career, I call it a hobby, that have done very well. They've done more than I expected them to do so. But for 99% of the games that I've covered, the, number, the amount of attention put onto them has been so small. And then you look at another content creator that is much larger, or even actually in fact a lot smaller than I am, and we get way more comments, way more views, way more likes, way more attention. It's just, just so off-putting. Really, really off-putting. One has a marathon and not a sprint. But it feels like this marathon keeps going on for so long. I'm running the same track over and over again rather than progressing forward. I initially made this channel to increase my social confidence, which for me it hasn't happened. Along with putting up passion towards the games that I really love, which... I feel like part of that passion is gone because of the lack of success I've had with it and the lack of attention that I've had with it and stuff like that. It's not just down to the um, quality of a person's viewpoints on the content that I make, but the quantity as well, I feel, matters as well. If you don't have a dedicated audience or a dedicated fan base then it feels like your content is just presented towards the abyss so like just thrown out there and there's nothing gained from it there's nothing that is noteworthy of it it feels like i'm shouting in space when nobody's gonna hear me as I've been submerged to the bottom of the ocean trying to swim back up, but no, the weight of the water is too great for you to be able to swim up, and you'll eventually be crushed by that water. And when I put that long post on my YouTube community page about over a month ago or something, I see that the channel itself has only grown by about 100 subscribers, and that is pathetic, like really pathetic. And it just shows that the kind of content that I do is way past its time. It would have worked many, many years ago, but I keep pursuing something that is non-existent nowadays. Feels like I'm rowing the same boat or running the same track or on the same treadmill, which I've mentioned earlier in the video. It feels like I have no potential at all. And I do not, and I repeat this, I do not want to be something or somebody in which I am not. I hate when people say that sometimes you have to do dark, suspect stuff in order to grow. Because then your stepping stones to getting more subscribers are based upon the factor that you did these kind of really horrific things in order to get to that point you have to rely on making other people suffer or making other people exposed in the spotlight for wrong reasons to be able to get to that point i see the process of the doing of getting to success more important than the actual end point itself i'm not one of these people who goes out of their way to do anything i can to be a success i always see myself as a righteous and virtuous person who would do something in what i would call the right way and vtubing is certainly not the right way putting yourself under a fake persona is not the right way calling others out for actions that they've done over a decade ago is not the right way we were all little kids at some point, and we all done stupid, diabolical things when we were younger. And if you try and deny that, then you are lying to yourself. The channel itself won't be deleted when I stop creating videos, but I won't be uploading any more videos at a given point in time.
and you'll hear about it from me when that time comes. I'll probably make a video like to say farewell or thank you for your support or everything like that. I'll probably even put a post on Twitter and a post on the YouTube community page as well to um, to put a date on when I'm I've stopped doing this because I feel like that there is no room for me to grow and there's no room for me to get any kind of motivation out of this kind of thing. I've realized throughout this video that I haven't cried or anything like that, but just saying that last sentence now, there is like that feeling that you have that you're about to cry, like you've just lost a loved one and stuff like that. And just think about that now, I feel like time has stopped since March 2020 when my grandfather died. And this pandemic, if you've been living under a rock for the past two years, there's been a pandemic in the world. And that has been a huge catalyst towards the number of VTubers rising up and just taking over the internet and ruining things for every other kind of content creator. I'm just imagining a YouTube or Twitch space which just has nothing but VTubers on. Nothing but fake people, fake personas. And I hate that. I really hate that. I went from just hating the fans to hating both the content creators and the fans. And it's such a vile way of thinking, but because they have sapped any potential that I've had of growing, then I'm sorry, but that is my opinion of them. That is my blunt opinion of them. So yeah, I just wanted to get all of this off here, out here, sorry, because the game I want to play last has been delayed and I don't see myself being able to last until June 2023, which is, which is now the new earliest to be released point for Student Union. But there are other games on the horizon which I will be covering. Girls, Girls, Girls. Then there's Floofstruck. And there's even a updated version of Midnight Train being made. Which has new characters and new endings, which I'm looking forward to. We're looking, I'll be calling that Midnight Train 2.0 or something, like I did with Aria Story when that game was updated with new characters and not, yeah, new characters. There was at least one new character and new endings to the game itself. But aside from that, I don't see any kind of potential of growth, like. There is one other idea I have, but still, it's going to be something which is going to be like, is it going to gain any kind of audience or anything like that? That is a RPG Maker Horror retrospective series where we f go through a particular game very, very thoroughly and pick apart the good points, pick apart the bad points and discuss the story of the game itself, discuss the puzzles within the game in a very, very extensive manner. And if I don't see success in any of those kind of things, then it would just be the case of, I've had my run, I've had my time on YouTube. And these things are just how they are in today's society of fake personas. I don't know how I'll go about an outro, but if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. I know this video has been entirely negative, but I need to share this out here. I feel like I need to get rid of all of this. You can't entirely get rid of all of it, but at least share your pent up frustration. And if the creator of student union is watching this i have no ill will against you this was a personal deadline that i set for myself and i think that you made the right decision in order to ensure your game's success to ensure that you put everything into the game that you promised but realize that the uh, the deadline is too soon for the aspirations that you have for the game itself
Thank you for watching and take care of yourselves.